Welcome to the uh, ongoing Atlantic World Art Fair 22 online program. We are delighted that you're spending some time with us as we offer up this series of online engagements that develop understanding of and appreciation for Atlantic Caribbean contemporary art. The program explores institution, institutional and alternative approaches to regional art practices while making connections between the past, present and future. Today we are focusing on contemporary art in Haiti. This location-specific conversation intends to enrich our understanding about the island's history and present culture, which have informed the artistic practices of two established artists, Pascal Monin and Edouard duval -Carrier. My hope is that we can continue these types of location-specific discussions as the Atlantic World Art Fair continues. I have the great pleasure of introducing Anthony Bogues. He is a writer, scholar and curator. He's the director of the Center for the Study of Slavery and Justice and the Asa Maser Professor of Humanities and Critical Theory at Brown University. Bogues is also an affiliated faculty member of the Departments of Political Science, Modern Culture and Media, History of Art and Architecture, and the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies. His major research and writing interests are intellectual, literary and cultural history, radical political thought, political theory, critical theory, Caribbean and African politics, as well as Haitian, Caribbean, and African art. He's the author of Caribbean's Freedom, the Political, sorry, the Early Political Thought of C.L.R. James, 1997, Black Heretics and Black Prophets, Radical Political Intellectuals, 2003, and Empire of Liberty, Power, Freedom, and Desire, 2010. He's the editor of From Revolution in the Tropics to Imagine Landscapes, the Art of Edouard duval Carrier from 2014, and Metamorphosis, The Art of Edouard de Valcarrier, 2017, as well as two volumes on Caribbean intellectual and literary history, After Man, Towards the Human, Critical Essays on Sylvia Winter from 2005, and The George Lamming Reader, The Aesthetics of Decolonization, 2011. Additionally, he has curated and co-curated exhibitions in the United States, South Africa, and the Caribbean. He's also a member of the editorial collective for the journal Boundary 2 and was an honorary professor at the Center for African Studies at the University of Cape Town in South Africa and he's now a visiting professor and curator at the University of Johannesburg, as well as I believe a visiting professor of African and African diaspora critical thought at the Free University in Amsterdam. Bogues is a member of the scientific committee of La Sainte d'Art in Haiti. He teaches courses on Africana, political philosophy, cultural politics, intellectual history, and contemporary critical theory, and comparative, comparative literature of Africa and the African diaspora, as well as courses on the history of Haitian society and art. Honestly, it really makes me want to go back to school. Safe to say we are in excellent hands with Dr. Anthony Bogues as our moderator today, and I look forward to learning from you and our featured artists. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're extremely busy, <laughs> so it's a real pleasure to have you. No, no, thank you very much, Lisa. Um, this is a really important uh, effort that you have um, engineered for the last couple of years, and I'm very happy to, to be part of it um, for this year. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone wherever you are i know there's some people watching in europe um so i just want to say hello uh, this is a special moment uh, i think uh, because we have in this virtual room uh two very important uh caribbean artists both of them haitian uh by birth and caribbean by their work and artistic uh, sensibilities pascal monet and, and edward de valcarrier are uh, Haitian artists who reside in the African uh, diaspora. Uh, who are, oh, sorry, who have resided in the diaspora, one in France at the moment and the other one in Miami. But their work is deeply embedded in, the, uh, in a long Caribbean history, um, both cultural, intellectual, as well as artistic uh, is history. And so we're going to engage in a Caribbean conversation this uh, this morning, this afternoon, uh, wherever, uh, as I said, wherever you are, uh, talking to them about their work, talking to them about Haitian art and uh, Caribbean art, but also spending time in a tiny, tiny selection of the vast uh, to do. So I will a very brief introduction. I always important 
talk of introduce themselves rather than to be introduced by an academic writer or critic. And so I want to ask uh, Pascal um, to introduce herself. Um, and as she introduces herself, we will see some of her, her work. And then I would ask uh, Edward de Valcaria to introduce himself. And then we will, uh, we will begin the conversation. So Pascal, over to you. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm Pascal Mona. I'm an artist, but also uh, I'm from uh, one of the oldest gallery in town uh, in Port-au-Prince. My family has been so I like, also was born of art and uh, been the director of the Notre Dame for two years. And now I'm in France working on uh, my art along also. We are producing a review called the Revue Intranquillité, where we actually present artists, photographers, poets, philosophers, uh, no borders between the. So um, I work in all sorts of different techniques. I do mobiles, as you can see in the background right now. Uh, this is cement and mirrors. And then I paint and. Uh, so I love to do all sorts of different uh, mediums. Yeah, so that's what I would say for now. <laughs> Thank you yeah. very much, Pascal. Uh, Edward? Yes, good morning. Uh, I'm Edward Duvagarie. I'm from France, born. Now I live after moving around quite a bit. I've established myself in Miami, uh, which is uh, to me an important place because it's protrudes in the Caribbean. And so uh, I prefer to call it the north of the Caribbean rather than the south of the USA. Anyways, I've been here. I've, uh, I was prior in France as well. <clears throat> I've been producing for many years. I was my first exhibit was at the Centre d'Art since we seem to all be tied to that institution. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it was it's to me one of my greatest achievements is to have participated uh, in the evolution of, of Haitian art, you know, like and be placed within it by being just at the Centre d'Art at the beginning. Um, it's um, I'm also uh, a curator and uh, organized exhibit. I mean, since I've been in Miami and realizing the the, the geopolitical position of that city. I've organized and mounted this project called the Global Caribbean, where every year during the major art fairs happening in, in this city, we are presenting contemporary art a, a, from a Caribbean a standpoint. Um, for the moment, I think that's enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, Edward. I, I wanted to talk a bit to how is the Haitian revolution and revolution? So I want to begin by asking how uh, how is the Haitian revolution influenced both of your works? So can I begin with Edward first and then Pascal just to uh, it's 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 quite a seminal uh, moment uh, in 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 our history and probably you know like the history of the Western world. Uh, the Haitian Revolution marked uh, uh, the first uh, probably uh, and most salient uh, contestation of the Western colonial world. And as Haitians, uh, we we have uh, uh, we are very proud of the same time we feed quite pride for it and. Two centuries, three centuries, we still are in the uh, uh, throes of what uh, I've been to figure it out. I've been trying to uh, understand it and unpack uh, such so much of a history that has been probably uh, misunderstood, hidden, I mean, put under the carpet. It, it is a very important moment and uh, it, and for the Caribbean, it it may, it means a lot. I mean, it was the only place that managed to uh, get a, uh, its own independence through its own means. 
uh, defeating a major army, and it was quite a violent uh, uh, thing that has left sequels in uh, on Haitian society and, and its history. Um, I mean, there's a lot more to say, but you know, I would like to see, hear what Pascal has to say as well. Me, uh, I some um, a lot of our money built their country so i think uh, it's been um i think it's still today really important to uh try back into history and uh it would um it would be good so i think uh it's still really present and even if in uh, in some circles it's really well known on a global uh in the global world it's like almost unknown it's like uh we don't exist and uh, as as much as we actually don't exist even in in terms of a nation we actually are falling into chaos and uh, somehow uh, it's really strange when you think of the importance, the central point, but as Edouard was saying, I think we've paid a really heavy price because of that, uh, that really strong um, part, part of our history. How, how, as, how does the revolution, or let me put it another way, how does the memory of the revolution uh, influence uh, either your work? Uh, Pascal and then Edward. I, I know. Uh, I will start myself because yeah. my my work is very much, you know, like uh, trying to first of all for me to understand where I come from because uh, I, I had a hiatus when I was young. My parents left Haiti, and I was probably nine years old. And I returned when I was fifteen, and it was a total rediscovery of my birthplace. And from that moment on, it's I've been studying it to try to understand it. Um, even though I had moved simply from one island to another to Puerto Rico. I mean, it was the vast change for me. And when I returned, um, it was uh, critical for me to understand, you know, like my position in that place and also where that place was, that country called Haiti. It is a fascinating story. And I've never, you know, I mean, my interest in that has never waned. And I still find the details and uh, moments in, in its history that are crucial for one's understanding of this whole concept of colonia, colonialism. And it's, uh, uh, it's something that really moves uh, in my work, trying to understand the, 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 the di dynamics behind the whole of the, the Western, Western Europe's uh, control of the of the americas the destruction of you know like the the, the indies as they as they early on called it and uh, all of this you know like it's part of, i mean all of it uh, all of these major events happened you know like very uh, forcefully on the island of hispaniola of which the half of the other you know half of it is haiti so um there is a lot of history to unpack i've tried to 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 condense it i've tried to put on the salient points of that in my work. And uh, it, it, I still have so much more to do. And also the relationship of Haiti to its neighbors and to its uh, uh, to all of its neighbors, north, south, east, west, I mean, have had serious consequences. And uh, to unpack all of these histories is to me, you know, like the crucial point of my work. And, yeah. I mean, you know, so it's uh, uh, sometimes to the detriment of, my uh, interest in the, the, all the mediums that I've engaged in to display that work. Yeah, okay. Um, Pascal? Yeah, um, I think um, as well, me, I don't really uh, use the revolution historically as a point of uh, uh, a start to some of my works, but then I would say that, uh, for example, with the Revue, we present ourselves as we will never be a center, but we can be an epicenter to um, that we can give our way of looking at the world. And uh, further than talking about only colonization, I think we can also 
speak about the world and the economics. And, you know, now we are in a neoliberal world. And Haiti is really at the other end of the... Um, because I think we've been sacrificed somehow. So I think that the way when you uh, are from Haiti, you have a way of looking at the Occidental world uh, that is uh, different. And I think that point of view is really important and could really, um, well, actually is important to build a new narrative and actually try and find ways uh, to reread history. Because uh, lately I was, I, uh, there was this beautiful documentary by the, uh, the daughter of Gaysan, I think, and it was really interesting for me to hear that she links the beginning of capitalism with the beginning of slavery. And she really, um, and, and all of that is a, a good, um, interests me in my work and I've worked on what I call la dette. Um, so, you know, the idea of the price of things and how things move around actually right now, because of course I did one uh, that was in Lake linked with the debt that Haiti actually paid to France until the, the 60s. And, uh, but now, for example, I'm doing one about linen here in Normandy, where it's amazing to see that we grow linen here, but you cannot buy the fabric because it goes all the way to China and back. So now in this globalizing world, we have nonsenses. And being from Haiti, I think... Um, made me more aware or more uh, engaged in that. So in my um, practice uh, and mainly also in my uh, installation, there is a real engagement. Uh, for example, I did a piece about rice, the price of rice and how the, the Haitian production was killed by, by um, by vast importation and you know when people come to help uh, us actually uh, often it's not uh, out of good heart and uh, we keep going down and down so of course Haiti has a responsibility in the situation today but it's been helped a lot by the international I, 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 so I, I think that that is interesting uh, to look yeah, well, I think one of the most interesting things yes. you said, Pascal, and, and Edward uh, uh, gestured, to, gestured to it as well, is that being from Haiti, that there is a, you have a different outlook, um, a different perspective, a different frame on the world. And I just wondered if you both could talk about what's that different frame? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we in the Caribbean... Uh, which obviously includes Haiti, uh, are where the where was where the modern world was actually opened up. Um, you know the Colombian voyages, etc. You know they came; they didn't go to North America. They came; they, they he arrived first in uh, in the Caribbean, and the, <clears throat> and the Spanish colonial project, and all the colonial projects. Um, you know the English and the French. Um, you know it was the Caribbean that was the the motto. And, and uh, Haiti was the, you know, as you all know, was the richest colony in the world. And then that was followed by Barbados and Jamaica. So that the, 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 the Caribbean is a special place in the making of the modern world. And Haiti is special in the Caribbean. So I'm trying to think what it is uh, when you both talk about a different way of looking at the world. What precisely do you mean? Well, we are looking at it from a different standpoint we, because we are uh, the colonized and we are, we've, we've had a very serious uh, uh, repercussions due to our re rebellion turned revolution, hence the beginnings of a new sovereignty for, for a small place. It's a very complicated history to unpack and I've been trying to figure it out and I've realized early on that it's all about commodities, you understand? So first of all, the uh, sugar, then cotton for the United States and uh, and these were, you know, like very important uh, uh, very important commodities uh, at, the, at the height of their production, but they they ensued with very serious uh, uh, social pro uh, 
re, I mean, social repercussions because both of them ba were based on, you know, like, I mean, on slavery. And for, for Haiti, I mean, you know, like the, 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 the case is that, you know, like the, the slavery was brutal and violent. And once uh, the life of a, uh, the life expectancy of a slave uh, going to Haiti back in the 18th and 17th, 18th century was probably four years. I mean, they, they knew that. I mean, they, they, they understood that and they rebelled against that. In the United States, you know, like, I mean, after the revolution that was proposing to give everybody, you know, like some some legal liberties against, you know, like a, the colonial, I mean, the English colonial power. I mean, then it was thwarted and there was a second slavery where, where all the slaves that were brought to the United States were sent back to the South, I mean, to cultivate cotton. And that is a very brutal kind of a work system that ended up in a major civil war. And, uh, and, and for this country in the United States, I mean, for the United States, it's a, uh, it's like still, you know, like, I mean, this uh, civil war has repercussions up till today. I mean, you know, like, whether do they believe in, you know, like in a central government, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of discussion still going on about it. And evidently, the conditions of the black people in the United States is far from being, you know, like, uh, uh, looked up, you know, I mean, it has to be re revisited properly. And, uh, and in view of what has happened, what has, you know, like, the, the, the sequels of that civil war. It's a very complicated thing, but it needs to be put back on the table and revisited and understood. Me as an artist, I mean, I try to delve into this kind of, uh, I mean, historical uh, uh, positioning and understanding so that, so that I, either me or the rest, you know, whoever consults my work, I mean, to understand a bit, you know, like from, you know, like another standpoint, you understand that of, you know, like, for example, somebody from Haiti looking at, at all of this. You understand? Because it's not really, I'm not looking at it from, you know, like the, the, the you know, like Washington, D.C. powerhouse or from, you know, like the, 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 blacks, the blacks in the United States. But looking at it from a Haitian standpoint, realizing, you know, like that all of this has had, we've had that history long, I mean, a while back, but it's still going on, and we still have to find links to understand it and propose, you know, like new ways of looking at it. Maybe that we can not solve it, but at least move forward and understand why we are in this position today. And this yeah. is all. This is the standpoint I I I I, I stand on. Yeah, Pascal, you might you had mentioned you are the one who mentioned a different view, if you know, from of the world. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I mean. What does that different view look like? Well, I'm I'm also uh, there going to talk because re revolution to me, there is also a notion of sacrifice, mm -hmm. and uh, the other outlook is also in terms of um, because I'm I've always been fascinated by by religions, and uh, Haiti and the history of the religion and. The, the different forms it's taken and how, uh, where it is today, even today, still uh, fascinates me. And I think we can learn from that because um, there is a liberty in the way um, uh, we engage in religion sometimes. I mean, not in all sectors of uh, the society, but uh, in terms of how at least in voodoo, the to survive, it has to uh, adapt, readapt, and um, that evolution that began also because, of course, when you think of the Haitian Revolution, you go back to the Ceremonie du Bois Caimon. So there is always a link to something like mystical. And then here in Europe, I think uh, one of the things that made me um, think and and and, and uh, was. When you see, for example, Lady Diana being uh, portrayed as Elzuli Diana, and somehow to look at the world, so suddenly I'm like, oh, maybe the new gods in the occidental world are Lady Diana, Mr. Bean, that have been recuperated within voodoo. And I've always thought it was extremely interesting with the Haitian backward uh, to 
to look at the society and the way it, it actually works, whether it's in Europe or uh, at least in the richest part of the world and the Haitian um, heritage um, fast, uh, 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 interests me. And, and uh, to go back to what Edouard was saying, uh, born there, raised, uh, uh, we do have a bit of the same parcours because I was born in Haiti, then raised in Switzerland, going back. So I think those contrasts in our lives um, make us engage in the, in trying to to find, I am uh, to question the the world uh, globally we are living in because it's true that those contrasts make you. Uh, it's hard to be convinced or to 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 believe the truth that are proposed about uh, the different histories. You know, for example, I. I cannot read a history book and believe everything that is written in it because of how I see that our history has been uh, put aside. So I think uh, I'm really um, grateful of that, uh, that Caribbean heritage or Haitian heritage that came also because of the revolution, I think. I want to uh, <clears throat> move from the revolution and to talk about uh, voodoo, um, one of the most important Afro-Caribbean religions. Um, you know, it has a, it is uh, a remarkable religion, um, has a remarkable set of practices, as you all both know. And I want to, um, I want to ask you both, how does uh, voodoo um, uh, influence um, the, both of your work. I mean, the, it is there, the, the imaginaries um, and images and the gods, the laws are present in each of your work. And I want to ask you, how, how, does, how, how does it influence your work? From what, is it a kind of source of inspiration um, only, or is it that you are painting as some, uh, you know, if you remember Andre Pear, um, and he was going to paint all the laws. So, are you um, are you painting the laws, or are you using the you know are you using the religion as a as a source, uh, inspirational source? Uh, well, me it was uh, try again in my in my trying to understand the 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 what I mean what's going on and what has happened in Haiti. It you cannot avoid the voodoo, and uh, it it was for me at the beginning of. Uh, point of research, a point of trying to understand what was going on in Haiti. And I realized, you know, like that historically, it's uh, it's a, first of all, I mean, an, ast an, an ast astonishing, quite, uh, quite an achievement for, you know, like, I mean, a uh, disparate uh, group of slaves coming from the whole coast of West Africa to find, uh, you know, like find a way, I mean, find a way to um, create a set of beliefs that 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 will that, that brought them in, in immediately to the point to the realization that liberty was the only way out of their their miseries, and uh, indeed to realize also that you know Haiti is a very peculiar place in the sense that it's probably the first Pan African state before you know like the, even the term was coined. I mean, people were arrived in Haiti from places. They, I mean, from from West Africa, which is a very large continent. I mean, that back in the two centuries ago, they would have never met each other. So you know, like uh, uh, it, it it brings to to question, you know, like I mean, the the whole evolution of that particular that that religion is of great interest. You know, like I mean not just for me, but for all Haitians, and to realize how dramatic and how peculiar it is, you know, like was for me for, I mean, up till now, I mean, a source of, of great interest and uh, uh, in awe also, because, you know, especially after visiting Africa, you know, like I realized that, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's it, the voodoo is like a, a compilation of, you know, like, I mean, va much vaster area than it is re being represented in Haiti. And uh, to understand that, you know, like, is to, to start understanding Haiti as well. I mean, Haitians be, I mean, like, the first thing they tell you, especially in the, 
in the voodoo temples and stuff like that, that we are 200 nations. I mean, what does that mean when they say that? I mean, it's a very complex kind of uh, uh, set of beliefs, but which retraces that particular history, which is, I mean, the, 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 one, of, the one of slavery. Uh, and uh, which is a story that has not been yet, you know, like uh, uh, studied properly. And, you know, like, and, and I mean, and you, Anthony, I mean, you're heading a this center, which is at the core of, of pushing this kind of uh, studies forward is important. And, um, and to me, I mean, we'll, we'll unravel so many uh, issues and stories that, that we are, you know, like beset with these days. So it's, uh, I mean, Vodou is, uh, is, is very, very interesting and uh, very forceful for the Haitian people. And forceful for you in your work, exactly. um, Pascal. <laughs> yeah. W one also, uh, once again, what I was always amazed is how uh, misunderstood and how the image that was built around Vodou, um, I mean, there is... Uh, like the like Haiti and the history of Haiti, there is a misconception. It's like uh, um, I've always thought it was extremely interesting to see how voodoo, uh, in the contrary of uh, Christian religion, where where actually things were written down, and I think the Occidental world is really into writings, where voodoo is much more oral. But then, and that's where I think being born in the gallery and seeing how the artists are the ones who wrote the history of voodoo. So I've always been fascinated by all the voodoo artists that I had the chance to meet through the gallery and over, over my childhood uh, all the way to now. And um, one of the other aspects of voodoo that really is the, the idea that it's a sponge actually to be able to survive, it keeps on integrating things. Whereas Christianity, I mean, the Bible has been written and I'm, I'm sure if uh, there was a proposition to add a chapter, there would be a bit of problems over that. And so, but, but the voodoo has that capacity of, of still evolving and, uh, in that discussion, I remember uh, having um, to deal with some museum of ethnology, you know, that saying, oh, so is this piece sacred or not? And it was always, for me, kind of funny, because I remember uh, uh, that was the Quai Branly was wanted to buy a, a big bizango. And they asked, okay, so this bizango you're showing me, or not. So of course I went to let any songs. So is this one sacred? And there was at least 10 of them. And he was like, this one is sacred. This one is not sacred. This one is sacred. And then his next sentence was like, but in a week, they can all be sacred. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Museum of Anthropology didn't want that solution because for them, sacred is something that has should be in the past, but they refuse to see the the reality of the liveliness of the, re the, the 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 religion so me i would say that in my work i try to create my own mythology which is of course it is inspired by voodoo but as much as it's inspired by christianism indian i mean like like the the voodoo i i i tend to integrate everything that comes to me. And um, I, um, I'm building, I have those characters that are following me, but they're not obligatory exactly voodoo gods because personally I've never been able to choose one religion and I think I will never do. <laughs> so, and I, I still, I mean, I, I like candles in all the hotels of all the different religions, but I will not choose. And so I like, um, and um, to me, what is interesting in art is also the mystery. And I've always loved when in voodoo they call the spirits les mystères. Because to me, art, or at least arts that interest me are the ones that are, 
kind of questioning the mysterium of life because somehow I think the at least to to me in my practice the echoes uh, the the what interests me is not finding answer but it's exploring all those moments where we are not the center but we realize we are part of something bigger and so um I've been, that's where I would say the link is between voodoo and my works. Okay, great. Thanks, Pascal. Um, really, uh, really great answer. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we just want to uh, continue the conversation, but a little differently, because we have been in the language of um, uh, old television, is that we have been talking heads, but we have been having, a, I think, a great conversation like you know like we were in Edward's studio or in your um, or in your studio um, in, uh, in 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 port au prince so I wanted to to move from those talking heads for each of you to speak about uh, some of your work you both have vast corpus of work um, and so you gave me a very difficult task last night which was not just looking through the the images that you sent, but the images that I actually have elsewhere of your work, um, uh, each of your works. Uh, so let's let's start with you, Pascal, since you ended. Uh, let's start with uh, with some of your uh, a discussion about you talking about some of your work, and I wanted to talk about this memorial um, yeah. which I first saw, and uh, and it was uh, and couldn't I couldn't leave it for quite a long time. Um, could you just explain it and could you explain the past? To me, this has been a work that I have put a lot of thoughts and a lot of um, uh, of my, my soul into it because um, the earthquake of 2010, 350,000 dead, I don't have to re-say how traumatic it's been. And um, I... In Haiti, one of the things that sometimes has made me sad is to see that we we keep on, we don't take lessons from different things that happen to us. And and I was really proud and, and really involved with Focal to do a memorial because I think that you cannot overcome something if you don't work on its memory and, and trying to work on it. So I was, um, it took me a while because I mean, it's to, it was the first memorial done actually maybe until now, it, it's one of the only in Port-au-Prince. I mean, it's in the, the, the one of the neighborhoods in Maltison. And for me, I decided to use the materials. Actually, I had never worked with cement and iron before that project. But of course, as the house, the people died mainly by the house that fell on them. So I decided to use the those two materials, cement and metal. And then it was the the philosophy behind it is, was how to create beauty out of something that is broken. And so I did all those broken mirrors. And there is 13 heads in that um, in that tree, and uh, because it was um, when we were going around the park uh, with Lorraine uh, Mangonez and Michel Pierre Louis, they were like, "What kind of space do you want?" And I was like, "You know what? This this tree looks like a church, and uh, I'd like to work in that tree." And so I chose that tree, and then came up with this idea. So I did molds of children of the neighborhoods uh, of Martisson, and those were the faces I used in the, um, that actually not only uh, people from the neighborhoods, there was also my daughters and also a foreigner. I mean, people that were there at the, uh, the time of the, of the earthquake. And so, uh, and, when I finalized the, the project, I was amazed to see that, you know, that it blooms actually in January, exactly at the time of the earthquake. And we didn't know that, nor Lorraine, nor Michelle, nor me, but 
as some people say, Azard is sometimes the shadow of God. Yeah. No, it is, it is, it is remarkable. And I think when I first saw it, um, um, but it was taken there by a member of FOCA. I, it, I stood there for many, for a very long time. Right? <laughs> because of it's the way. And it's, also what I like is there's only 12 heads, 12 yeah. children and actually one adult. Mm -hmm. But what I liked and I, I, I really uh, is, we, there was, we don't know how many people died in that earthquake. That's the truth. And what I think is really interesting, depending on the sun, you know, it glitters like disco balls. Yes. So actually those 13 things, uh, at some point, you have thousands of little glitters in the tree. And to me, it's also reflecting on numbers, of, on counting, on how do you deal with things that you don't even know actually what happened? We don't know how many people died. We, there's so many things. Even if yeah. you've lived it, and that's well, that is not only in Haiti, it's all over the world. But uh, how much of what we live do we understand? And and there is also that question in that piece. Great, thank you. The next piece, please. Um, yeah, wanted to talk to you about. Uh, this particular piece, um, that was not this one, no. not, not the one in the cut, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is the one about uh, history, which is done in recently, 22. Yeah, where that was done a few months ago. About that. Yeah, yeah. So that one is an answer to a beautiful piece of Christopher Cozier, a Trinidadian contemporary uh, artist yeah, yeah, that yes. I respect his work. Mm -hmm. And he did a work done uh, called Turbulences. And um, I was, when I saw it, when he showed me the picture, I was like, I said, how clever. Because, you know, so many Caribbean artists, uh, contemporary artists, some of the really contemporary ones are going to be more recognized outside of their home island than actually sometimes in their own island. And often also governments are not obligatory financing the representation in big Biennial. So this is so clever because he was doing these things with papers and architect clips. And uh, I don't know how you call it, a rope that you use to do cement walls. So me, I wanted to do a girl's answer to Chris's work where, where I use uh, hair clips I he used uh, uh, the things you the washing lines, and so it's uh, to me it was a girl's answer to uh, a, a boy's proposition, and then also of course dealing with uh, because I even he was using beautiful paper and ink, and me I decided to use trash bags and all the bags that you you know. In the Caribbean, every time you go buy something, they give you those those uh, bags that you find all over the sea, actually. So I decided to use all those materials, and that way also, uh, it's like a vitrail. Uh, how do you say that in, in English? Um, uh, where, where the sun actually can go through. And uh, I call it histoire d'eau, eau, like an egg. Because um, I had given me the myself the subject of working on birth and rebirth, uh, a certain history of women, and that's also why I I have been um, engaging in that uh, in that discussion, you know, from a, a man to from a woman to a man, and so um, that um, that that piece is going to be shown actually next month. Uh, this month, actually, we are almost in in May in Port-au-Prince. Okay, the next one. Yeah, Linen Princess. Okay, so exactly. That's, you know, as I was telling you that I create my own uh, personal mythology, but not only. When I came here in Normandy, it's, they call it uh, Le Pays de Caux, the land of linen. 
And so you have beautiful, when they bloom, they have that little blue color that you can see on her face. And then, of course, uh, first thing I thought, let me buy fabric. And I realized that you cannot buy fabric in Normandy because all the raw linen is actually sent to China. So it's much easier in Normandy to buy clothes that are already made. And so I decided to, you know, all the braids are made um, out of raw linen. And of course the, the, um, the color is the color of the, um, uh, of the flowers. And then, because that's going to be an installation, so it's going to have a long body, which is um, a braid of linen. And at the end, there's going to be, um, um, how do you call the, the things you put for the bur the boats not to move? Uh, une ancre de bateau, an anchor. Uh, it ends with an anchor, and on top, it's got a balance that weights so what is the price of things? You know, we, we are ready to, to pay something less. We are ready to kill our ecology. So I've, I've been uh, 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 dealing a lot with all those, uh, those contrasts. And, you know, the, the work I began with La Dette de l'Independence, now this has become like an obsession in my work. I have, I'm dealing with La Dette on all sorts of different lin uh, levels and that I'm going to be presenting it here in a festival in Normandy because you know that here in Normandy the kids have no idea that it's not even produced here yes okay so i thought i think it's lovely i love to go uh, dig in 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 parts of history that are untold because nobody wants to confront those realities so again even if that's inspired from a, a history here in Normandy, it's still, I feel, with my glasses of Caribbean person. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about both of your works is the, the ways in which you deploy history. Um, the ways in which, um, uh, you know, history becomes a, a living present for you both. Um, so it is not just about something in the past, it's a, and, and it is not even how, <clears throat> how the past shapes the present, but really how the present itself is actually part of a living history that we have to think what we have to think about. Can we move to your pieces, Edward? Sure. Yeah, I want to start with um, Algo Rex, and I'm starting early, 1980, you know, because uh, this is one of your first major pieces. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to ask you about it. If you could describe it to the audience, please. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably my first law. I mean, first of that, I, it was my first piece to tell you, frankly, I did it while still in school in Canada and I was trying to, uh, I inscribed myself in the Haitian, uh, uh, groups of artists that frequented the, the Centre d'Art early on. And those were the ones that were really uh, informing me at the time. And uh, I wanted to continue in, in, in their ways of looking at Haiti. And, um, and I've realized that they never really did any portraiture of our, or interpretation of their gods. So, I, I mean, that was my first attempt to create like a whole lexicon of gods and uh, i i did it for a while and but there's so many of them so i decided that i had done i mean enough honor to the voodoo laws apparently there's <coughs> I mean, there so many of them uh in haiti that you know like the, you cannot really count them uh contrary to singles to single uh <clears throat> religious uh, or or i mean the the Haitian cosmogony of, 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 of deities is like boundless. So I could spend my whole life trying to depict them. So this is Ag a a Azaka, the, the, the god of our agriculture. I mean, surveying the land. And uh, of course, he's represented by the, this bountiful uh, a landscape. And uh, in the background, you can see the mountains with, you know, like the, 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 the grids of properties, etc. That, that belongs to his realm. Um, I did it, I mean, it was literally, I mean, my, uh, 
I mean, it was for my first exhibit, and uh, it ended up in the museum in in the middle of uh, the, the the USA in in uh, Iowa. Anyways, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say that they, I mean, they, you know, I think uh, Andre Pear, as you know, talked about painting all the lowers. You know, he, he identified the two hundred, so two hundred mentions, two hundred lowers. Um, let's look. Let's look at the next one. So Edward, um, the that's the, it's the next the next image, please. Not just, yeah, that I want to ask you about the talk to you about this one. Here. If this one, yeah, 1996. Yes, it was uh, uh, following that particular uh, vein of that first. I mean, this is much later, but this was, uh, I was invited to participate in the um, Atlanta Olympics. And, uh, Olymp and they had what they call the Cultural Olympiads. So I decided, you know, like out of my own, you know, like volition to pack up all the gods from Haiti and bring them to meet their cousins from the from Greece or whatever. So they were, I mean, again, I realized that there was, it was an infinite kind of a project. In this one, I managed to identify more than 30 a, a, a gods that I turned it into a series of bronzes accompanied by this politic to show the, the voyages of these gods from Africa to through the trend, uh, uh, the Middle Passage and uh, ending up in Haiti. I mean, it, it, it's a very convoluted piece, which, you know, like I thought would one day adorn some sort of cathedral of voodoo uh, in my own um, mind. That's exactly what should have happened. But history took its turns. Anyways, you have the gods leaving Africa, the, the, the Middle Passage, and the terrible dance of the god of death on Haiti. And again, you know, like on a voyage, is there's the Freda apprehended by the Coast Guard in the United States. So in one sweep, I give the whole history of the plight of uh, the Haitian people through the, their, the, my understanding of their cosmogony. Um, and... Um, it was presented uh, at, the, at the Atlanta Olympics. And um, there it is. Now it's like all over the place. <laughs> Some of it is at certain museums, uh, sculptures that are at, at another. Anyways, one day, hopefully, I hope I make enough money so I can donate to Haiti's first voodoo cathedral because they have never had the 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 the... I mean, which is, I think, would have been normal to have uh, a, a really serious uh, state-sponsored uh, church that would, you know, like uh, absorb this this whole religion, that whole uh, fervor. But you know, like, I mean, they, they, they it's, it's not, it's not a, a happening because the government is <laughs> like. Fall, fall prey to you know like all sorts of influences and uh with the advent of all these adventist and 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 church uh, uh a catholic uh i don't even remember what they are called now uh evangelicals, any, evangelicals and this cohort of you know naysayers you know like they they've even complicated the situation even more so, um, anyways, I did my best, and hopefully, I'll continue uh, in that vein to create a space that would real—I mean, re that would make the Haitians realize that there's there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with their with their African-based religions, and uh, that they that they at, that they should really honor them. Anyways. I was probably be before my time. <laughs> <laughs> You're still living, Edward. Um, yes, I, okay. I'm still let's alive. Let's look, let's look at the next one, please. Yeah. <laughs> this was another. No, 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 this one, this one. This uh, one. Right. Right. Landscape. Yes, uh, I've always been interested in how the the. I mean, this being in Miami, I'm very much into the Caribbean. And uh, uh, this part of the United States uh, really protrudes in, the, in, in, in this basin called the Caribbean Basin. And I've always been interested in how we are portrayed, not, you know, like, not how we see ourselves, but how others see us. And, uh, and I've always wondered where this whole concept of sea, sun, beaches 
you know, like is formulated when it concerns us, when we were basically, you know, like uh, slavery out, you know, like, I mean, colonial outposts with slaves and plantations, etc. When did this happen that they've turned these islands into, you know, like this pristine, uh, uh, a, I mean, par 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 paradise uh, a, in the minds of people? And uh, I realized that this probably happened, you know, like during... Uh, I mean, the, the Americans, the United States being the, the force that it was, managed to, you know, like, wanted to create an, an American kind of hegemony uh, of, uh, and uh, really was proposing, I mean, just like Haiti did, you know, like to liberate all these places in, in Latin America so that they would come under one, you know, like one, a uh, concept which is that of democracy and that of you know like internal commerce etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, when they and it happened in the 19th century and they they were at loss because I mean people said well who's going to buy our sugar or bananas etc and it was uh, uh, the I mean part of the Monroe doctrine and to solve this problem and make people I mean New York investors or Chicago investors to to look at that region, they started this whole program of reinventing the Americas for the for the purpose of the American investors, and uh, they did send a battery of, of artists to, to the region, uh, to the first of all to the Caribbean and to the rest of, of uh, South America and Central America, and these they created this whole ver I mean new version of these places, which uh, I mean these. To be basically, you know, like a bit of a, of a fantasy that they've created and portrayed, and I took up on that particular group of artists, the Hudson School, and played, you know, like with their works, and you know, like trying to make sure that people understand that they were complete fantasies. That what you know, like what was missing there was, you know, like were the people and you know, like the ways they were treated and the plantation system, the slavery, et cetera, et cetera, and by just changing this whole uh, gamut of, 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 of colors that they use, you know, like, which is still, you know, like being used, you know, like to represent the Caribbean. Um, and there they are. I mean, they, I created an exhibit, a mountain and exhibit for the a museum here, the Perez Museum, where they gave me a room and I've turned it into the, you know, like the imagined landscape uh, uh, yeah. a, a group of work. And here is one of them. Yeah, great. I want to ask both of you, um, uh, beginning with Pascal, um, what's, what's your, what materials do you like to work with? And then Excuse say, me, I didn't what hear. What materials do you like to work with? In your, um, your I'd say I, I like all materials. The ones I didn't use is just because they didn't come across my hand. I'd love to work in more materials than I actually do. But so, of course, I had a traditional uh, formation. So painting and ink and drawing is uh, like the base. But then uh, I've loved working with sequence beads. And, uh, and uh, now I'm experiencing cement and and all the mobiles because I like the shadows. So sometimes uh, now the shadows interest me even more than the actual sculpture. So it's not even in the material, a shadow, but still you need material to create them. And so it's like, uh, I'd love one day that Edouard would allow me in his studio so that like, I could learn some of the resin he uses, you know? So I'm really, uh, there is all those uh, materials that I've used, but I wish I could use even more. <laughs> and what what materials do you love? Well, I was I, I, I was again saying to myself, Edward, you should stop one day talking about history of Haiti and the and the sad, you know, like the sadness of this transatlantic trade and blah 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 and blah blah blah, and to start talking about the materiality of my work. And uh, indeed, I mean, I never lose uh, sight of it, where I am, where I stand in the, you know, like in the, the art history, in art history, and what I should do, you know, like to bring something new to the medium, to whatever, you know, like to 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 this form of 
of, you know, I mean, to this art. And every time I do a project, especially big projects, I mean, I really rack my brains to find something that has not yet been done. And in this case, for this particular group of work, since I was uh, uh, thinking about, you know, like, uh, landscapes and you know like the 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 whole politics behind you know like the portraying places i i decided to really look into the the materiality and presented this work since they were i was planning to present them present you know like landscapes in the caribbean which are usually you know, like uh, presented under the sun, you know, like seeing beautiful colors, etc. to turn the scale and present them at night. So that was, you know, like the novelty. And how to do that was by using glitter glue. Uh, I mean, to create, you know, like this, this effect of, you know, like a slight rain, you know, like a dusk. So I had all this uh, presented in my, I mean, that's what was behind the whole project, really, mm -hmm. is like how to do that. And I never talk about it. And I'm glad that, you know, like you mentioned it because <clears throat> it's essential to the, whole pro to the whole project, even though it is about a very lofty idea and, you know, like an intellectual position. Me, I basically, I was trying to figure out how to portray, uh, you know, like something at night, you know, like uh, with that glitter, with that, you know, like sparkling effect that it, it, it rain has over leaves. So... But now, I mean, I mean, I've done that, been there, done that. So I'm looking for different things. I'm doing this whole project, you know, like for South Africa on the history of Haiti, yes. But I had to find something new to do. So I've decided to use engravings and, uh, and on plexiglass and making them as big as I could. Because, you know, like, first of all, I love the idea of using a material that is of this time, which is plastic. And using an old method, that of dry point, but changing it over its head and presenting it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, pushing the envelope by making them as large scale as possible. There's an image that we didn't man show here, which is the, the King Henry and his court. Yeah, yeah. If they, we could go back to it and you, you will see uh, where it's at. The last no, one. It's, the, it's, the... it's not this one. Not this one, the next one. The next one, yes. Yeah. This, one. this is a, a eight feet by sixteen feet uh, engraving on plexiglass. I could copy it, but I don't like the idea of be uh, of it being done on paper. So I left uh, these other plates for large scale uh, a project of that sort. So you can imagine every time I look at it, my hand hurts because I did it all by dry point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. All right. Um, okay. Great. Um, let me, uh, we're coming to an end, so, but I want to ask uh, two more questions. Um, one is, uh, uh, what are you both working on now? Okay, me right now, I'm, I've been commissioned by the business school of the University of Miami to create a monumental uh, panel for their for their uh, atrium, I mean, they apparently they they well, it's not apparently they built. A, I mean, that school is very beautiful. So architecturally, they've created this this entrance, which is quite high and stuff. Like that. So I wanted to to tell the story of of the Floridas as I understand it. I've been here for more than twenty years, and um, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving up the last finishing touches, and I'm installing next week. So. I cannot show you it right now. But so I want to thank you very much for taking time out to talk to us because you have a very tight deadline. Exactly. <laughs> so Pascal, what are you working on now? Well, I'm uh, actually, because I'm going to have this uh, big show in the patrimonial church here. And so I've been, uh, right now I'm working on shrouds. So I'm doing body prints of people living in the time of pandemia. Because I think we have been going through quite a strange time lately. And, uh, um, you know, and in Haiti, we have a strong relationship with the Gede and Baron Samedi. And I think uh, we have been dealing here in Europe, at least, uh, like we can fight death. And uh, to me, I think uh, we it would be interesting that people actually... Uh, 
uh, question our relationship to death in this new society. So that's going to be in in the church and also with linen because, of course, the shroud is done out of linen. So linen has been the common uh, obsession in that next show. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Let me ask both of you um, a final question. What do you think of Caribbean art today and where are we going? That's a huge question, but I thought, it, it, and sometimes the critics write about that and scholars write about that, but I love to hear what you two artists uh, think about uh, where we're going in term, for Caribbean art today. First Either of all, first. I'll start <laughs> because this has been one of my <laughs> one of my pet projects. And uh, when I arrived in here in Miami, I realized that uh, because the, the fair started showing up here, I mean, major international fairs, I realized immediately that the Caribbean per, per se was not, you know, like properly represented and et cetera, et cetera, and that we should be presenting that. So I mean, I did call to the federal government and they, they've ac acquiesced to this, this st sad state of affairs. And uh, we, I've started this program called the Global Caribbean, where artists from the region, contemporary art, the artists from the region were to be presented, are to be presented, are, are presented here in Miami in, 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 uh, as a collateral project of the, the, the fairs, the, the Miami art fairs, etc. cetera, uh, Basel. Uh, I mean, that we would invite, and every year that we would have a reunion here in Miami do, during the, uh, the month of December where, you know, like artists would present their work, uh, contemporary artists from the region. And so this project is, is on its 12th year. And um, I think that it is, uh, I mean, to me, I mean, the, at the beginning was to see if there are, I mean, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, currents or that there are uh, links between all of these islands. And believe you me, you might not see it immediately when you see the form and the and the presentation and stuff like that. But the 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 intent of all of these artists from the Caribbean is to you know like create a, a, a very coherent uh, way, and the, and they're very conscious of how they are being represented and how they're being presented in uh, uh, in in on the international platform it is very evident that every every place has its own specificities and its own their own particular histories but as a region i think that you know like they've realized that they are better you know like they would be better off if there was a, a, um, a platform that would present it, that would present present them you know like on a, a on a regional level which is a tendentious kind of thing. But at the same time, what I say in this matter is that we all have the same basic histories. And uh, we were, you know, like you know, plantations, we were colonies, we were this, we were that. And that particular history has marked us uh, quite uh, strongly. And no matter what I do, whenever I go to any place in the Caribbean, is this, I've, I've reached another version of, where I come from, and it's very, it's quite fascinating to see uh, the, the the commonalities, the similarities, rather than see the differences. I mean, right. you know, like it's uh, it's truly, you know, like I mean, it's been a, a very uh, interesting when pro project, and it's not over yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks very much, Edward Pascal. Yeah, I, I've always, you know, I was just in Trinidad and Tobago, and it was a UNESCO residence where they have. Uh, Caribbean women artists traveling within the Caribbean. And uh, it is true that the Caribbean is seen from the US exists, but what in Haiti I was always amazed to see is how we don't know much from our neighbors geographically, because we, um, we still, let's say Haiti, is linked to the US and France. But when I was in Trinidad and Tobago, it's much more England and Holland. And and so, and as it's more, 
you have to actually go from Trinidad. Actually, you cannot go from Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> to Haiti because there's no planes. And and because of that strange history we've had in the Caribbean, the the um, the movements are not really happening within the island. So it's always, to me, uh, I, again, when I was in Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> I realized that I didn't know much of it when I actually got there. And then as Edouard was saying, I felt really close to home. There was things that I, I was like, okay, we, we are, and we don't speak the same language, and there is people from Asia and India. The food is not the same, but still, there is a common ground, as you say, even if there are, of course, differences. But, but there are, and that's why also I've been trying, and, and um, to when I was at the Centre d'Art, trying to discuss on how we could create... Um, uh, an online sharing of information, but that would be built with from the Caribbean to actually give access, let's say, in Haiti to know better what's happening in Jamaica, in Trinidad, in Santo Domingo. And actually, I think by, by having that more present within the Caribbean, it would be, it, it would make it more possible to build our own narrative and begin to write because even i mean when i i read um uh, uh, there's not enough written by haitians on haitian artists let's say but it's also because i realized you know being grown up in a gallery and uh, all the paintings i saw at first i thought everybody had that knowledge until i realized that the number of paintings I've seen in my life, actually, I have a, a whole um, bibliotheque inside myself. And I've always had, I have that dream that one day by, because internet has that possibility that people could upload images and actually have access to a space where you can see uh, there. I'm talking more about Haiti because, you know, being from a gallery, I realized that, I don't know, let's say 88% of the paintings I sold were sold to foreigners. So if you want to know about Haitian art, sometimes when you come to Haiti thinking you're going to see Haitian art, that's not where it is anymore. And, uh, and sometimes I dream of a place that would, that, that would make it possible to reunite the materials of our history so that then we can work on it from there and also from all the diaspora. Anyway. Yeah, yeah very, very well put, Pascal. Thank you very much. And I would say that the, one of the, the show I did, uh, my first show on Haitian art, and, um, well, you know, which was done in, um, in 2004, I think, one of the things that struck me was trying to find the pieces is that I found pieces at the Nadia Gallery, I found pieces in other galleries, but that the vast majority of pieces I found in the in all around United States and two strange places, Waterloo and Pittsburgh. And then I, you know, part, what we didn't do in the show was to say why, but it always struck me that we had to it was important for us to for us to understand a story as to how some really extraordinary pieces ended up not in New York but in Pittsburgh or ended up at the Waterloo Gallery. And, and that, one and that that and that is part of the hidden the hidden history of Haitian art, which we have now and spoken. a mapping, a mapping, mapping of the of Haitian Greece. art collection within the world and i think because talking yes. with christopher crozier and other people of the caribbean the same thing happened everywhere doing a mapping of the important collection uh, yeah could be a treasure for creators and make also possible because when you know how shipping and uh, all of this is complicated within the caribbean if we had a better knowledge of where the collections are it would make uh, amazing shows and, and, and pieces to be able to come out and be shown to the public. Thank you all both very much. I think this has been a 
remarkable conversation on, uh, on, on, on Caribbean and Haitian art, and also shows a little bit of, of both your work. Um, I would like to thank uh, Lisa for, you know, for conceiving this. Um, and um, it's, uh, I think the work that she's doing in the Black Pony Gallery is opens up a set of spaces where we can have this discussion, but also I hope that we can take a set of practical steps to do some of the things that we have just spoken about. So Absolutely. to the audience, I want to say thank you, either good afternoon or good night, depending on where you are. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you all thank so much you. for your time. Thank you, and, I, and I just want to pick up, too, that the Atlantic World Art Fair, we live online at present because it's logistical um, and it's smart for right now. But ideally, we land somewhere and uh, we start to do that story, like you said, which is to really make sure we have these inter-island exchanges um, and really begin to further document what we're achieving. Thank you all so much for your time. I'm, I'm inspired. And I was going to say about your materiality. Careful, don't give away all your secrets. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Yes. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Now we turn this